Welcome everyone. We are the special guests of Miles Franklin CEO Andy Schechtman here at the Miles Franklin Vault. Andy, I understand this is just one of several vaults, but we wanted to get a chance to ask you some of the questions that people ask most frequently to us about storage, about what vault storage can do for them. And so I thought maybe we could, uh, this would be a great place to do it because this is where a lot of your clients and a lot of our own uh, personal uh, metals are stored as well. Absolutely, I'm glad you're here. So let's go on inside. Let's do it, let's go inside, take a look. We did have several questions that clients have continued to ask me about the benefits of storage. And we've had you on the show before talking about aspects of that that people need to be aware of. Um, some of the things that people think about often, like if they live in an apartment or if they live in a crowded metro area and they're just not comfortable having the, the full amount of their holdings in their, in their you know, where they live. For sure. But they want to have some things close at hand, but they want to have some things where they know that they're under uh, protection. and. Uh, one of the things I was noticing uh, some clients asked me about was insurance. And so maybe you can tell us about are the, the metals that they store at the Miles Franklin Vault insured? 100% fully insured. 100% fully personal. Absolutely. That's the whole premise of storing in any, in any vault. If you're storing in a safe deposit box in a bank, that's the one thing that's missing is the insurance. So what you're paying for in a storage facility like this it's the insurance. That is the largest cost component of any storage facility other than the brick and mortar is the insurance. And when you have a, a vault filled with product like this, that insurance becomes costly. So the only thing that really is important in a good storage facility is the insurance. Yes. Well, I know the other thing you mentioned was the difference between a bank. There's also the lovely Dodd-Frank Act that was passed in 2010 after the GFC that uh, makes depositors in the bank unsecured creditors of the bank. Whereas if you're paying a, a private vaulting company like Miles Franklin uh, to uh, store your metals for you, uh, that's a completely different relationship. Totally, it's non-banking, it's non-reportable. And there have been, in fact, one of, uh, one of the brokers in my office brought in a Wells Fargo uh, communication that he received just the other day that said, you can't have more than $10,000 in your safe deposit box. Last year or the year before, Chase Bank sent out something similar, except it was even more specific and said you cannot have cash or coin in your safe deposit box. Bottom line is storing stuff in a safe deposit box is penny wise and dumb foolish, in my opinion. If you're going to store anything in the facility, it has to be insured, and it has to be segregated, and it has to be allocated. That is the whole premise of secure storage, and if you're, if you're going to relinquish the custody and have counterparty risk to any degree with the storage facility. It must be insured and the place must have a good reputation and uh, um, all of which we think uh, are adequately covered in our programs. You mentioned reporting. That's another question that I've been asked by clients is how private is their property when they choose vault storage? 100% private. No one in the country knows about it. Uh, no one in government knows about it. You have no annualized reporting on your 1040, nothing with FACTA or FBAR or any of these these other reporting requirements that people hear about. There is none at all whatsoever. So it's it's almost as if it's buried in a hole in your backyard, um, with the exception of getting your, your monthly statement that we send by mail. So we are totally off the grid with our storage facility. Yep, that's one of the things I've uh, talked to people about because they sometimes ask, hey, how come I can't just click an order very easily have an online storefront? And you've mentioned to us a couple times in the past that other high-profile uh, dealers, bullion dealers, who do have customer-facing information on the, on the web are vulnerable to being hacked, and there have been some hacks. There have been, and I just uh, um, am of the mindset that Precious metals belongs in an analog world, and I know we're very digital nowadays, but it's the one thing to me that I take comfort in knowing it's off. It's just, it's not on the grid. It's, it's, it's private. It's old school. It's, it's on the telephone or on uh, a mailed statement. Um, I think that there are certain things that are appropriate for um, online reporting and online access. To me, this is, this is something that we feel very comfortable with just having it old school. 
pretty well. Another reason sometimes people are looking at and they're seeing more volatility in the stock market, they're seeing more volatility in the financial world, they're seeing more volatility even in metals prices. They're anticipating, as we've been told like by Rick Rule and others, that we may be in for a year to two to three years, maybe even more of a precious metals bull market. It can get choppy. It can get really big movement days. And if, if people decide that the time comes when they want to sell some of their metals or swap, say, the gold-silver ratio normalizes and they want to swap back out of silver, which has given them a, a higher elevator ride and, and back into more gold than they started with, what are the advantages to them of having their metal already at a depository that's near where trading can also happen so they don't have to then avoid you know, waiting for the shipping to happen, that sort of thing. That's but huge. It's the biggest issue that that being in some depositories would, you would face, would be the how cumbersome it is to uh, sell it or to transfer because because it might be far away and has to be shipped. With this facility, we are able to immediately give credit if someone wants to sell or trade from gold and silver from gold to platinum or whatever it may be, within literally minutes, we are able to, uh, as long as the, the client fills out the paperwork, transfers the the, uh, the metal to our parent account, we're then able to send the wire or convert it into silver or whatever the, the request may be. It's an immediate type of deal, which is, which is I think, very, very helpful in these job markets, for sure. In terms of the security of the facility, that's another thing that people will watch for. Um, you mentioned the insurance, which is absolutely uh, key and critical, and I imagine that in order to even obtain that insurance, you have to convince the insurers that the that the security measures and the construction of the, of the vault and all of the security systems around there. I know we've seen camera systems ever since. So the relationship with the local police department, there has to be uh, multiple tests run periodically, uh, both planned and unplanned, all sorts of stuff, so that you are in compliance. And, also with the IRA companies as well, to be an IRA approved custodian for companies like New Direction and Entrust. You have to show that you are, uh, not only is the, the facility itself adequately safeguarded, but also the protocols that you have in place for security and burglary and that kind of stuff. Another topic you mentioned in passing, and I know these words go really fast, so I didn't want to miss on it, because people ask this about storage all the time, and that is about allocated and segregated versus pooled and commingled or whatever. There's uh, a very um, attractive pricing that sometimes people say, oh, look, I can save money storing if I do this this pooled. I don't care. Why would I care if it's the same 100 ounces or 1,000 ounces I get back later than the ones I put in? Talk to us about why it's so important because a lot of people feel like they really want to know that their metals are separated from others. So we see in this vault, for example, there's as far as the eye can see, there's these racks of, of uh, boxes of metals. I, I understood from uh, some of the staff here that was, was helped me understand this is that there's a everything is barcoded, everything is tracked, everything is located. Can you talk to us about how people's metals are kept separate for them, uh, separate, not not pooled with it? That's the most important thing in storage period. I mean, aside from it being insured, it's the segregation and the allocation. Um, you could put a drop of nail polish on any coin inside of any of these boxes, and 20 years from now, it would still be there when you came to open it. It's really very, very important because, and frankly, there is variance in the way people store their metal. And if you're going to be part of a pooled program and you get whatever the bucket fills up at that moment, I've seen horrible horror stories. And then most of them centered around precious metals IRAs coming from depositories on the East Coast that were sent to us uh, that were supposed to be name brand bars, as an example. And when they came back, they weren't name brand bars. Well, in silver 100 ounce bars, that could be the difference of $200 a bar. And if someone were to be taking possession of 200 bars at a variance of $200 a bar, they're very unhappy. I've seen that many times. So whenever something in this industry is free uh, uh, or inordinately inexpensive because of its the way that it is segregated or not segregated, that is the telltale sign run for the hills. You do not want to store in a commingled account, yeah. period. If you're storing in any of our offshore depositories or brinks, as an example, in Canada, if it were commingled, it would be reportable to the federal government for the fact or not. But due to the fact that it is segregated and directly held in the client's name specifically um, and audited, um, then indeed it is, it is not reportable. So whether it be offshore or whether it be here, it's super important that your stuff is your stuff the whole way through the process. And uh, because you know, I'm looking at stuff right here at a stack of 100-ounce bars, and 
you know, some of them look better than others. Well, do you want to be the one that gets the, the bars that don't look as well as others? So if you're going to spend a lot of money to, to buy quality product, you want to get that product back when you want it. Right. Another question the clients ask about is, do they have the ability to ship their own product here, even if they didn't buy it from Miles Franklin? Yes. Can they put metals on storage even if they already own them at home? Yes, absolutely. You can store any type of metal that you'd like, whether it was purchased from us or or not. Uh, if it was purchased from another company, and what will happen will be that it will be checked by the sophisticated machinery that we have uh, to check for authenticity. And as long as everything checks it, absolutely, it can go right into your segregated no problem. I had a personal experience with that uh, just this week. Uh, my wife and I drove across the country nonstop with a number of boxes of our own metals that we had purchased over the years and delivered them here. And um, and uh, they were received in, inspected, and put into uh, allocated and segregated storage for us. So I know uh, that that's exactly what happened. So. Yeah, you can come here five days a week unannounced to check on your metal or pick it up. Um, and you can't do that if it's not allocated and segregated. And it just removes any any opportunity for impropriety. So it's, it's really very important. I mean, you've touched on the two most important things, quality insurance, uh, segregation, and then the third one that I put in is location. We're here in the Midwest. Um, you know, being on either coast, you may want to think twice nowadays. So being in a highly populated, dense area, you may want to think twice. Doesn't mean that they're not quality. Since we have a storage facility is in, in New York City and Los Angeles with bricks, and I have full confidence in it. But I think all of these little pieces add up to make a strength of holding it. Uh, our facility in the Midwest, fully segregated, uh, fully insured, to me, it's as good of an opportunity to safeguard your metal privately in a good place here in the United States as anything you'll find in the industry. Well, folks, if you have additional questions that I haven't asked Andy Sheckman, the CEO of Miles Franklin, about storage of precious metals in Miles Franklin's vaulting program, feel free to add them as comments below this video or email us at libertyandfinance at gmail.com, and we will get those questions answered for you. So, Andy, thanks for giving us this tour inside your vault. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. If you've decided that now is the right time for you to protect your family's financial future by acquiring physical precious metals, gold and silver, I'm delighted to let you know that I have now become a licensed dealer's representative for Miles Franklin, one of the oldest and most trusted names in bullion dealerships. And we can provide you with physical delivery to your personal possession or to professional vault storage or precious metals IRAs. Just email me at Liberty and Finance at ProtonMail.com and please include your name and phone number in your email to Liberty and Finance at ProtonMail.com. We'll get right back with you and find out how to best meet your needs so that you can either begin or increase your acquisition of physical precious metals now and protect your family's future starting today.